the Texas Department of State Health Services Laboratory Services Section has developed this training video to assist submitters and providers with the implementation of processing procedures for specimens submitted for HIV, Hep C, and syphilis testing. When working with blood specimens, appropriate personal protective equipment, or PPE, must be used for personal safety. The recommended PPE for separating serum from red top or serum separator blood tubes includes gloves, a lab coat, and face protection as appropriate for potential splash hazards. Face protection could consist of a face shield or safety glasses. After a blood sample has been collected from a patient into a red top tube or serum separator tube, commonly known as an SST, the blood begins to clot. A specimen collected in a blood collection tube with clot activator should be inverted five times to facilitate the clotting process. Allow the specimens to sit at ambient temperature until a clot has formed. For most patients, clotting will occur in as little as 10 minutes. However, the clotting process may require up to 60 minutes in red top tubes while SSTs may require up to 30 minutes for clotting to occur. Prior to centrifugation, the specimen tube should be re-examined for any hairline cracks that will cause the tube to break during the centrifugation process. When centrifuging specimens, it is very important to ensure that the centrifuge is properly balanced. Improper balancing can cause damage to the centrifuge, personnel, or specimens. Tubes of the same type and size should be compared and matched according to similar fill volumes. If you have only one tube to centrifuge, then you will need to prepare a balance tube using water to match the specimen fill volume. In addition, the balance tube should be of the same type and size as the specimen tube. Place the matched specimens in the centrifuge according to the number of specimens. An even number of specimens can be balanced by placing half of the specimens on one side of the rotor and aligning the other half directly across from these tubes. An odd number of specimens will require either the use of an additional balance tube or if you have three tubes you may use this configuration and refer to flip cards uh, for diagrams on balancing odd number of tubes. Once the centrifuge is properly balanced, close the lid and ensure it is latched completely. The correct spinning conditions for centrifuge serum specimens is 1100 to 1300 RPMs for 15 minutes. Most clinical blood centrifuges spin only at one speed, so you would just need to turn the timer to 15 minutes to start the centrifuge. Once the spin time is complete, it is very important to allow the rotor to stop spinning completely before opening the centrifuge lid. Failure to follow these instructions could cause serious illness, serious injury to personnel. Be conscious of any possible broken tubes. If breakage has occurred, view the safety section of this video or refer to the flip cards for further instructions. If no tubes are broken or damaged, remove the intact specimens from the centrifuge and place in the rack.
assemble the required materials needed to perform the serum separation. Test tube rack, transport container, transfer pipette, absorbent pad, permanent marker, biohazard container, and PPE. Label the transport container appropriately with the patient's information. Be sure to use a permanent marker because other marker types can become smeared and unreadable. Wearing the appropriate PPE, remove the stopper from the red top tube and place it on the absorbent pad. Using a transfer pipette, remove the serum from the red top tube, being careful not to disturb the clot, and dispense it into the appropriately labeled transport tube. Place the stopper in the red top tube and discard the tube into the biohazard container. Cap the transport tube, ensuring that the cap is secure. Pouring the specimen serum from the blood collection tube into a transport tube is discouraged for safety reasons. If collecting specimens from a SST, the serum does not need to be transferred to, print to a transport container after centrifugation. Please ensure that the fill volume adheres to the recommended instructions contained in the package insert. Place the labeled transport tube or centrifuge SST in a cooler or other cold storage device until ready for shipping. When specimens are ready to be shipped, remove the tubes from the cold storage. Check that the name on the tube matches the name on the specimen submission form. Place the plastic, place the specimen tubes in the plastic container provided with the shipping box. Remember to add absorbent material sufficient to soak up any liquid in the tubes. Place the plastic container into the cold shipping box and add at least two cold packs. Note, cold packs must be cold or frozen before being placed into the cold shipping box. Place the styrofoam lid on the cold shipping box. Take the appropriate specimen submission forms for each specimen and place into the plastic bag. Ensure that the plastic bag containing the appropriate specimen submission forms is placed on top of the styrofoam lid. Close the box and secure the top with tape. Place the provided air bill on top of the box. Ship specimens every day except on Friday, Saturday, Sunday or the day before a federally observed holiday. Specimens must be shipped cold and received cold within five days of collection. When a spill occurs, Immediately remove any contaminated PPE and place it in a biohazard container. Inform others in the immediate area about the spill and retrieve your spill kit.